Hey folks, thanks for watching Peace Love and Guns. Today we have a different kind of episode for you. Today we're going to be doing a tabletop overview of three DMR rifles. We have the SIG 716 DMR Gen 1 with some custom accoutrement. We have a HK MR 762A1 LRP2 as it comes. And then we also have the FN SCAR 20S with a scope on it chosen by the owner. So let's begin the discussion. Well, first of all, who is this video for? Well, it's for anybody who is wondering, wow, I really want a DMR and I don't want to build one, but there's a lot of good ones on the market right now and I have a lot of money. So a DMR is essentially a designated marksman rifle. It's meant as a squad support weapon, essentially, if you're talking about it in a combat sort of role. Essentially, you have your best shot with the heavier and more accurate rifle, so that if there are further targets or you have to take down a mobile target or something like that, they would have a more powerful, more accurate rifle out to six, eight hundred yards. <clears throat> Whereas most uh, patrol rifles standard are good to about 300 yards with a relative... Uh, Terminal ballistics and... Yeah. Shooting ease so, and all that kind of stuff. So that's essentially what these are for. They're a semi-automatic precision platform. You're not, we're not talking like precision like two mile range or something like that. We're talking precision six to eight hundred yards, essentially. You want to be able to hit a man-sized target at six to eight hundred yards, reliably. So we've got three big brand ones here on the market. Um, they're kind of what I consider the big three East uh, European companies. You've got FN... You've got HK, you've got SIG. These were kind of these were pretty new for me to shoot. I don't know if you've shot these before at all. No, I, I have a little bit of experience with the 716, uh, but these were completely alien to me, right. in the sense that I've never shot these platforms. I mean, they they all feel similar, right? Right, right. So yeah, this is one of the original Gen ones, and they've changed barrel length. They didn't come with. They came with originally with an A2 flash hider. And I swapped it out to the this American Precision Arms brake, but the new ones come out with a SIG style brake on it. You can check out our SIG DMR, SIG 716 DMR Gen 2 first shots video. All three of these have first shots videos. Well, the Gen 2 has first shots video on this channel, but this HK MR 762A1, it's from one of my customers. He's, he's a really good customer. He's here all the time. But uh, he let us borrow both of these guns. Um, he was really excited to get this one, and so was I, because I've been a fan of HK, but it ended up kind of letting us down a little bit. And the then, viewer that's observant may notice that <laughs> one of these things is not like the other, and that this doesn't have a trigger in it right now. This one doesn't have a trigger in it right now because we actually pulled in a Geisley to replace the god-awful trigger that it came with. And We're it, not and joking. This trigger was god awful. Both the SIG and the new one, too, comes with the Geisley SSA. And this uh, SCAR 20 actually came with a Geisley SSA as well. This is the only one that came with a mil spec piece of junk, to be honest, trigger. It, and, like, but the thing is, I've got mil spec. I, and I felt plenty of mil spec rifles that the trigger feels single stagey. It's hard, but it's at least crisp. Right. This thing was grindy, not crisp, indistinct, uh, relatively hard pull, and just creepy as heck. 3100 for just the gun, 4000 essentially for this same gun, minus this, this, and this, right? right. So, well. And then, what was the MSRP on the FN? 4500. 45. So, so we can look at this one in two contexts, I think. So right. no optic, but bipod and stock. Right. Bipod and stock, but an optic. And then this one is a nice stock, no bipod, no optic. So right. those are maybe considerations. It doesn't come with a bipod, which I kind of wish it did, but at the same time, that also leaves you to buy a decent one. But at the same time... There's so many good Harris bipods. All I had to do was grab one. 
or the Magpul you know, one. My thing. experience of that is very positive. Is it? I haven't yeah. worked with Magpul ones too much, but I've always had good luck with the Harris. Even this one, I don't. I like the Harris bipod on it. I think that might be my favorite thing about the gun. Actually, <laughs> the stock on it is excellent. Like of the three, I would say that this the Scar probably came with the best stock on it. Absolutely. But Absolutely. I like the stock. I like that it's got a Picatinny on the bottom, so you can do the monopods. Um, this one, unfortunately, doesn't really have a spot for a monopod, which I wish it did. The uh, HK, just there's no monopod on that either. No, no chance for it. Yeah, the HK stock is kind of novel in that it has the um, ability to keep the same length of pull. That was kind of cool to me. Well, not like the pull, but cheek weld position is what you're going to Right, yes. Yeah. So but, the same cheek weld, even though you can change the length of pull. The but you, you, you could same. argue the same thing with this one because it's got such a long cheek weld area that when you scooch this back, it actually doesn't change where you put your face. Sure. It just... These... The other two rifles, they do the same thing without without making it expensive. With that, yeah, without looking all fancy with the spring loaded. Exactly. Some Just, people might not like that kind of grindy spring sound in there too, by the way. Yeah, it, it's one Thanks. of those situations of, the stock is preference, but I'd say the Scar comes with the best stock. Absolutely, I mean, it's, it's aluminum, mm -hmm. it feels high quality, it doesn't feel like a wannabe A2 stock with some springs in it. And I don't want this video to be just uh, ah. talking on the MR762, no. but this well, looks like an A2 stock with some adjustment to it. Right. And, I mean... It, I, I actually like the stock. I just don't think that it's worth the money. Yeah. This stock so, you can get for about 300 bucks. Which is too much, I think. And, and when, the, There's and too the, many good Magpul options. Right. Really. And the markup that it caused on the rifle was too much, in my opinion. So, I mean, there's great things about all three of these rifles. They're all very accurate, without a doubt. Like, even, like, as much as we've been irritated about the HK in the last couple weeks, it's been very accurate. Um, they're all not super accurate, but, I mean, like... So, I would, uh, we tested this gun with three different types of ammo, and it did not shoot very well with all three types of ammo. I mean, so there might be a, a unicorn ammo out there that this gun absolutely loves. Maybe every other ammo in the world shoots better with this, but we just didn't see that. What we saw was three types of ammo go through this gun, and it was almost double the group sizes on average than those same three types of ammo in this gun. Well, well I can say that they're all three very accurate, this one was definitely outperformed by the other two. Like, so, <clears throat> so back to the positives. Because like, I was trying to go with positives here. Sorry. <laughs> you mentioned accuracy, so, so I'm just trying to be realistic. Well, just in general. Accuracy-wise, we did three types of ammo here and here. And this this really outperformed it in 100 <laughs> yards. So 200, 300, 400 yards, I mean, that accuracy is just going to be magnified. Exactly. Yeah, I mean. And, and then this one, we, we fired two of those same types of ammo. And it was... Very nice. Uh, I would say very easily on par with this. We're talking MOA groups. This was two MOA and three or four MOA with bulk ammo. Right. Two MOA with precision ammo, four MOA with bulk ammo. And this was like one and two. Uh, one MOA with precision ammo, two MOA with bulk ammo. Right. Ish. So when you're, when you're talking about these rifles, you know, you're going to have a lot of similarities between what people mostly shoot with them. And they're all very AR-esque, you know. The SCAR is a SCAR, but it was very much marketed or manufactured, designed. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, after ARs. So it's got right. a very AR platform controls, and the grips are the same. Um, the stocks, while they're not going to be cross compatible, but they're going to be familiar. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing unusual. Pistol grips about, are compatible. Yeah, you, know, you can you can pretty much go from an AR to a SCAR and not have a lot of difference in the way right. you handle it. Um, both of these are basically supposed to be AR-10 sort of platforms. Um, and this is where the HK really starts to fall behind the SIG when it comes to a lot of things, I feel like. Because yes, this one is, was definitely less accurate than the other two, but at the same time, 
Um, I mean, the SCAR is going to have a proprietary max. It's not an AR, it's a SCAR. The SIG does take a standard AR-10 PMAG sort of situation here. If I can drop the dang mag. There we go. So it does take standard PMAGs, uh, AR-10 style stuff. LR, I think they call it LRSR. Uh, the HK just, just takes proprietary mags. Um, I have, I was... Which is a shame. It, it because is. Because this is ostensibly an AR-10. I mean, it is an AR-10, but they decided to put their own proprietary mags on there, which in our shooting wasn't an improvement. <laughs> it's uh, not. So, this is something that you don't so. see on an AR-10 magazine. Uh, as being problematic, but the rim of the cartridge uh, actually can get hung up when you're loading into the uh, MR762 magazine, and we actually hung up cartridges twice. You could train yourself not to do that, but you know it probably is just because we suck or whatever. But <laughs> that's not a not a problem with the P mag. You don't accidentally wedge the base of the cartridge between the walls or the feed lips on the PMAG. It just doesn't happen. On this one, uh, that wasn't the case, and we found that you could do that. So it was just this isn't an improvement um, so far that we can see. Yeah, you can definitely find... You can just set it down. Um, as far as proprietariness goes, they're all three proprietary platforms to an extent, right? That's a SCAR. This is an HK MR762. It's almost completely proprietary. Uh, and the SIG, I think the bolt is proprietary and the, the upper front end of it is definitely proprietary. I can't say about the barrel nut itself, but the, the gas system, the, the front top rail and everything, even though it is monolithic, it's, you're not gonna be able to replace this rail without some serious custom work. Um, well, if we're talking about so. what's proprietary and what's not, yeah. This is an AR-10, essentially. The gas system and the stuff that's adjacent to the gas system, that's proprietary because that's SIG's system. Cool. Everything in here is the, AR-10 compatible. If you took the lower off, it's all AR-10 compatible. So, the, And the muzzle brake is AR-10 compatible. And, of course, is. any of the accessories, that's fair. Yes. Um, this, that is not the case. The muzzle brake the, the is muzzle, proprietarily threaded. The, the muzzle brake is indeed proprietarily threaded. The uh, barrel nut, I confirmed, was a proprietary. The handguard is proprietary because of the gas system that it uses. You're going to have to have a specific type of barrel of handguard up front, especially because of the way everything works here. And also, this is not key mod, this it's is HP. Yeah, HP. So, your SOL, if you think it's going to work properly, with key mod. Yeah. Um, Magazine is proprietary. The trigger's proprietary. Really? Yes. It, it, um, we <laughs> are ordering a Geisley trigger, but the Geisley trigger is almost double the price. MSRP is 475 The magazine release is proprietary. Yes, very proprietary. But yeah, the, the Geisley trigger is 475 MSRP, whereas the trigger for this one is 240 Well, naturally, it's going to cost twice as much. For a proprietary thing. Uh, the the buttstock is proprietary. Uh, the, the actually the tube looks like it might be proprietary as well. Castle nut. Yeah, and, I, I looked it buffer. up and it is indeed proprietary. And uh, then the bolt is proprietary as well. Yep. Even I mean, the bolt is proprietary as well. I didn't confirm. This about doesn't the look as though it's proprietary. <laughs> yeah. And this does not appear to be proprietary, but it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, I wouldn't hold my breath on the grip, um, but it, uh, yeah. As far as we know, we, we haven't checked the grip and we haven't checked the mag release. No, not mag release, the bolt catch. Bolt catch. So, you know, it kind of looks like it might be because <laughs> it looks longer. So, yeah, there's a lot of proprietary stuff with this gun, which really bothers me. So It now, only bothers me because this is an AR-10. I mean, it right. is an AR-10, but it's not. I mean, now you see the SCAR, it's a different gun, so a lot of stuff isn't going to work on that works on a standard AR. That being said, the muzzle brake is a standard muzzle brake threading. Um, <clears throat> the non-308 version uses P-Mags. Yeah, exactly. They, I don't feel like they were trying to be proprietary with it. 
So I can't confirm what little bits and pieces. Well, well I mean, all are. of this stuff, magazine release, the bolt catch, the safeties, the trigger group, all of that stuff is proprietary to this. Right. B but it's it's a different weapon. Right. So this is a different weapon, but it's a different weapon in that, hey, we're going to build our own AR-10 and then change every single thing about it. Right. And my only problem with that is, why did they do all of that? Because in our shooting, we cannot tell that there was any sort of improvement over a standard DI gun that's yeah. AR-10 or a piston uh, AR-10 that's half the price. Um, so, yeah, as, as far as this has um, turned into a MR762 <laughs> fest again. No. Hey, I was trying to stay away from that. I, can't. I, was, I was trying to be positive. But we're talking about proprietariness. So yes, we are talking this about this. Is valid. Now, as mentioned, um, this as it comes is a $7,000 MSRP. Um, the SCAR is still pretty weighty at $4,500, and this is $3,100 uh, as it comes in the box. Um, and we're giving the Gen 2 pricing on that. Yes, this, the Gen 2 pricing. You can, Gen 2 is going to look a little bit different up front, but other than that, it's essentially the same. They did start putting ambidextrous. They actually changed the gas system in it as well. So there's actually a lot different in the Gen 2 because um, they were trying to improve it and they dropped a couple of pounds off it and stuff like that. Because this sucker, it's pretty weighty. It's weighty. It's a little weighty. Um, you know, it, I think it was upwards of 12 pounds, I believe, out at it's Alpha heavy, Hill. which means it's reliable. Which I think uh, the newer one was 9 or 10 pounds. Well, these. because you can't recall that specific fact, that means you're not educated on this, and you should look up all the facts before you make a video. That's what, what the guys on the HK forum said. I looked it up. <laughs> um, the new SIG 716 DMR out of the box weighs 8.5 pounds, which is markedly lighter than the other options. Um, so it, it kind of... What I'm saying here is what you want to buy is kind of, you've got good options here. You know, this SIG is by far the cheapest one by a thousand dollars and it's very accurate. The SCAR 20S, it's a very cool gun. Um, I actually prefer it if, it, if money wasn't an option, I'd probably buy the SCAR over the SIG just because I love side charging. I agree too. Um, love it. Um, it's not so much for the side charging per se for me, but that is kind of a factor. I really like them both, and the only thing that really sways me towards the SCAR is the side charging. So side charging is, is very valid from a design standpoint to me. Right. I think we mentioned this earlier, you mentioned this earlier, that um, you can actually stay on target. You can stay inside the scope, in the scope box, and rack clear malfunctions perhaps, or rechamber while keeping your target in view. So it's I'm, valid. I'm not a fan of punching myself in the face when trying to stay on target and right. well, you rack just around. can't <laughs> really, right. Um, so that's, if, if money wasn't an issue, I would go with the SCAR here. Um, for those of y'all that are just absolute HK, they won an HK, don't buy this one. Buy the $4,000 one. Buy the, the, the non-LRP one. Because what comes on it is just is not worth your money. It's not worth the extra three thousand dollars. I'm not trying to be mean. Um, I appreciate the customer sending like letting us borrow this one. It was real cool to you know learn about it as much as we could. But it really feels like they just took the 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 model down and then threw a bunch of accessories into the box and threw the packaging for those accessories into the box. And said, "Here you go." Yeah. So for a sixty-nine hundred dollar gun to get a rifle that has a scope mounted to it, but it's not really mounted, uh, it's just kind of on there. It's tightened down, so you think that it's on there, but it's not sighted in for sure. It's not even mounted with the crosshairs level. Uh, and it's mounted too far forward. So it really feels like they just slapped this together in somebody's office and then throw all of the trash for those components in the box with it. Um, definitely disappointing to get that out of the box and shoot with it for the first time. Buy this step down, save yourself that $3,000, put a nice piece of glass on it. If you have to have this, buy that. Um, yep. And get yourself a, a quality bipod as well. We, we did the research on it. And the, the, the $3,000 difference, 
Um, I think there was the paint job, which I can't say that the paint job is worth a thousand dollars or not. <laughs> it's pretty sweet. It has it, a very it pulse is. rifle-y kind of look. I think it's awesome. This handguard feels really good. So this, just to talk about uh, positives, this feels really good. I would move this bipod up, way up, uh, way up, uh, way up from where it's at. Just. A, because I can hold a little bit further, and B, because it's going to be more stable in shooting. Right. But yeah, that this hand guard feels really good. But just the pieces that we got in the box that are different from the original, they're half... If you really want this gun, but don't want to pay the extra 3000 buy the pieces separately. You'll save $1,500. Yep. If you're paying and to me right prices. there, that, that says this is a cash grab. It's yep. just to lure people in with a shiny product in the HK name, and they want someone to swipe their card, and um, then they say, all right, pull one of those base models off the shelf, and then we'll slap these things on it, and that's $1,500 pro uh, $1, of... Uh, Probably even further than that, because yeah. MSRP on accessories is still pretty high. True. So, so I mean, it, they're literally taking their base model off the shelf. And I would say they're getting another $2,000 profit. Off yeah, of this. I, it would not surprise me if they slap these together right before they ship them out. Wouldn't surprise because two thousand dollars. I mean, this is. I feel like this is literally. I mean, I almost. I. I feel like it's almost dishonest the way this is being sold. I agree because this this is not a long range scope. It's it's a three to three nine. to nine. Like this is a deer hunter scope. This is what you would put on little yeah. Johnny's first deer rifle. Exactly. How is this a DMR scope? It is a loophole VXR. It is going to hold zero. It's go. It is a quality scope. It, it's got decent turrets and all that. So you know, it's, but but for a designated marksman rifle on what is supposed to be a, you know, a weapon of war. Because um, no, looking at these two rifles, both of these here. We have about the same MSRP here at, with the scope included as this one with the scope included. So you're talking a piece of really good, granted, I think Trigicon is a little overpricey for no reason, but it's still a really good piece of glass versus a loophole scope, which it, it's a loophole, but it's... It's a, it's a, it's a low-end loophole. It's kind of like the loophole you'd find in Walmart. I mean, you know I mean VXR. I mean, yeah. I it's mean, it's. I don't know that like, Walmart has the VXR, but well, it I, is. I'm just saying, yeah. if you were gonna find a loophole in Walmart, <laughs> it, it'd be this one. I mean, it's it, seriously. If you wanted to get like little Johnny, your firstborn, the best scope that he really deserves on his first rifle, this is a great scope. Excellent scope. Excellent scope for a three seven thousand dollar gun package. It's an excellent scope for deer no. hunting in East Texas. Yeah. It is not a DMR scope. It is no. not a long range scope. I will completely agree with all of that. The other scopes here are way cheaper, like technically speaking. <laughs> yeah, technically speaking in that... In that they mark it up for $3,000. Right, yeah. Now, out the box, I think I was able to find a couple for like $500. Yeah, something like that. Something like that for this. So the markup, yeah, it's, it's absurd. So, do we want to do like a feature by feature comparison between some? Because I see, I feel like we're spending an awful lot of time on this one. That we. <coughs> so, yeah. Speaking of feature to feature, um, they all have the same sort of uh, bolt catch bolt, release. Yes, thank you. Bolt catch release. They all have a very similar Magazine. mag drop, except that the H case is not ambidextrous. Um, they all have very similar safeties. Now the nice thing about the FN is that it is a 45 degree throw out the box. You might be able to find that for these two guns. Probably for this one, I can't mark really say about that one. Mm -hmm. But for that one, be out the box. I realize I really like a 45 degree throw. So I do too. That's pretty cool. I put one on out the my box. AR-15. Um, as we were talking about earlier, these are your standard uh, AR straight or. Charging handles? Yes, charging handles, rear charging handles, whereas this one has a swappable side charging handle. Big fan of that. Big fan of that. Big fan of it. Um, I would do something different from this FN. I would make this ambidextrous. Yeah. Um, if I had my say, I would definitely put an ambidextrous charging handle in that. And those are accessories that are available. Yeah. Um, Non-proprietary mags, uh, proprietary mag, and proprietary mag. 
Uh, there are aftermarket versions for this mag, but just something to keep in mind. It's worth noting on the charging handle, this is a reciprocating charging handle. So if you're shooting in some, some people weird... about that? Me. You, you He's talking hit, about me. You didn't hit yourself with it one time today. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I have hit myself with... I have hit myself with reciprocating charging handles on, on guns before. Um, it's all about training, folks. If you're going to use a reciprocating charging handle, like an AK or anything else, just train so you know where the hell it is. So, it's just a finer point to note. <laughs> These guns don't have anything on the outside of them that stick out that move back and forth violently when you shoot the gun. The only thing you have to worry about with these guns when you pull the trigger is that this end is going to go bang and you need to not be in front of it and you need to know where it's pointing. And this one's probably not going to feed the next round. <laughs> <laughs> this gun, however, if you're... The situations I've gotten into trouble before with this, or that I know other people have gotten into trouble, is when you're sighting in a gun, or when you're taking a long distance shot, and you're trying to get real comfortable with the gun, maybe in kind of an unconventional shooting space, and maybe you're taking one of these kind of grips, or... I'm not saying it happens often or that it's super likely to happen, but to me, a better design for a gun if you're going to make a gun from scratch and just special sauce magically make this gun right now, the one that doesn't have <laughs> moving around on the outside of it is a better gun. It, it, this doesn't make the gun worse than these guns by any stretch, but if you could make that feature... See, I actually don't mind it, personally, because for, for one, it keeps extra parts out of it. Cause, sure, sure, sure. Cause non green ball handle means more parts. It means that you've got to have a, you, you've a got floating have, piece in there. Exactly. And you've got to have a latch to hold it. So, uh, and what were we shooting a little while ago that it has a non reciprocate The Steyr AUG or the Steyr uh, UBR. USR? The FNP90 also has a non reciprocating charge. But what we were noticing with that with the AUG, it was the Ban Era AUG. That gun has a non reciprocating charging handle, but it was reciprocating which is not something that's super cool if it's supposed to be non-reciprocating because <laughs> uh, a couple times I felt like it was hitting my thumb and then we watched it back in slow-mo and it's definitely reciprocating and definitely striking me a couple times. Um, <laughs> so those have their issues. So, yeah. So, I mean, we obviously have a difference of opinion on the charge and handle reciprocation situation. It, just just I, to spoil the surprise, I like this gun the best out of all three. That, that issue aside. And I don't think it's an issue. It's just from a design standpoint, I would prefer it to be non-reciprocating, if at all possible. Price and accessories not considered, I agree with you. I prefer the, the SCAR. I really like that SCAR. It's a good gun. I really like my, my SIG, but if somebody said, hey, I'll trade you for the SCAR, I'd probably say yes. Yeah, but I mean, they'd be losing... Well, you'd be taking them for a ride. On <laughs> they that. would. Like I said, price not considered. Because, you know, I like my cigs. Sure. Uh, I think even price so. considered, I like this one better than this. I mean, price is... I'm also referring to this gun here when we're saying price not considered. So I'm just going to be honest. Not considered, I, I'm just going to be honest. For me, this is not in the running whatsoever. Not even close. Not even close. Like... Slide it off the table <laughs> and let it hit the ground. I'm sorry. It's just we want this to is like a this. sample yeah. size of one. I've had some interaction with the Gen Two on this platform, and it's excellent, just like this one is. This is excellent. This, in my opinion, not so excellent. Um, so sample size of two, sample size of one, sample size of one. This gun, push it off the table. Between these two, I still like this for a thousand dollars more. I feel like I still like it more than this. Right. It feels like, I mean, the AR-10, AR-15. It wasn't designed from the ground up to be ambidextrous, and I like ambidextrous guns. I know you're left-handed, and you have adapted to right-handed, you know, the right-handed world that we live in. <laughs> But I think that if 
hypothetically, right, or if uh, as a thought experiment we created the perfect gun, the perfect gun would be ambidextrous. I would agree with you because a lot of people end up having problems. So, but my point between these two guns wasn't ambidextrous is the best hole high. It was uh, the AR-15, the AR-10 AR is not a perfect platform. It is as popular as it is because it's been made cheap recently. Uh, it has um, been our military's choice of rifle, but it's imperfect. Um, it, it's, it's not a design that's very easily convertible to ambidextrous. Um, no, there are not. things you can do, but it is very much... You, you start getting levers hanging off weird places. Um... Yeah, I mean, it, it, the way that this magazine release works is a perfect example. It's a button on one side, it's a lever on the other. Yeah. And that's the same thing that's going on with, with the SCAR. Yeah, because the SCAR was blatantly based on the way the AR works, because I, I believe the military just didn't want to have to do too as, much cross training. As far as so. the, as far as, you know, where the rubber meets the road, what your fire control group does, uh, obviously the piston system is different and all of that. Right, but that's, but we're talking mostly end user, how the yeah. user functions with it here. So what I was saying about um, controls though, right? We're, we're dealing with guns that are, they're iterative improvements on the base AR-10 platform, right. and they're still very imperfect. Um, I mean, this one doesn't attempt to even be ambidextrous <laughs> as far as the magazine release. Uh, the magazine releases on these guys are both, they're different experiences from the right-hand side of the gun to the left-hand side of the gun. Um, but where this is improved, and I guess this is where I was going uh, like 15 minutes ago before I got <laughs> yeah. off on a huge tangent, tangent um, where this is improved as far as controls are concerned, the charging handle is operable while you're on fire control and you can be on target and you can manipulate that without punching yourself in the nose with the charging handle. This is archaic or I don't know a word that's not offensive to the AR-10 and AR-15 aficionado, but it's not a great design if we're talking about that hypothetical perfect gun. I've, I've carried I carried an M16, both an A2 and an A4, while I was in the Marine Corps for five years. Um, this, I've always hated the rear charging handle on it. Um, the rear charging handle is the whole reason why we have a forward assist. Because if you, if this gets stuck, all you gotta do is grab the handle, which is another reason why I actually don't like um, non reciprocating because you handles. can't push it forward, yeah. You can't manipulate it's, it because well. it's it's whereas it's, it is disconnected from it. Whereas the rear charging handle actually removes that capability altogether, which is why I've never understood why people buy set up the ARs without the Ford Assist because those folks are setting them up for like target shooting and they're not sure, combat but, roll or whatever. But it drives me cross-eyed so your opinions all that shooting is very largely opinion but as far as i'm concerned every ar needs a ford assist i mean we, you say that and i agree if i was building an ar if i was buying an ar i want the forward assist frankly removing it is a cost it's a cost increase because this is mil spec it's in all of the plans it's in the the genetics of this gun it's in its dna 300 different factories have the right the, <laughs> the people that go and remove this it's it's interesting to me that like they try and make it like a cost saving thing but it's actually not it actually costs more to design that out but yeah. not having that um is you say you know it, it drives you cross eye or whatever but I've never been in a situation where that actually does anything for me. And I know there's a lot of people like that where this has never saved their ass. I have, actually. Uh, and um, I'm, I'm just saying it's right. kind of a rare feature for that to be necessary. Right. I mean, I'm sure the average individual won't. But, like, occasionally you just get a little bit of goop in there. Or, like, you take a shot, 
I mean, I've been shooting in some, to put it blatantly, really shitty conditions. I mean, how my last trip to the range while I was in the Marine Corps, I ended up laying in a mud puddle the entire time because it rained the entire time. So rather than find a comfortable position, I would just find a good mud puddle to lay in because there was just no other option. And the, it got so bad that at one point, I was primarily using the forward assist. It would, it, it would actually eject the round, and it'd get about three-quarter of the way, and I'd have to slam my forward assist. To, and that's just one example of the times I've had to use it. I mean, most, most shooters aren't going to have to deal with laying in a mud right. puddle for a week while shooting. Um, but I did. And so I know the uses of this. And I know that if we had a gun with a proper charging handle on it, um, I could use the charging handle instead and actually manipulated it better. But that's 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 my spiel on the the charging handle situation. So, I think we more or less agree on the charging handle situation. Yeah. But I have a feeling a lot of people are going to disagree with that. I, but it it's something that like why remove it from the rifle if it's not going to make the rifle better like you're going to save a minuscule amount of weight it's going to make it cost more and then it's taking away functionality so those are three things that kind of say like why yeah exactly oh speaking of uh similarities Mm -hmm. they're all very simple to take apart this comes apart just like every other ar that you've ever touched as does this with an asterisk i'll get back to that in just a second Mm. and the scar there's a million videos of how to take them apart this comes apart just like the scar uh 16 and 17 do it's very simple the the it's very simple um now back to the hk and my little asterisk there uh these pins here actually have buttons inside them so they are proprietary pins and they are supposed to require a takedown tool which hk didn't bother to throw in the box when they sent it to us. So, um, yeah, you're not going to just push those out. Like, you can push these out all day long. That they're, pin they're, captive, easy, but... they're captive pins. Like, these are captive pins. Right. But they have a ball detent style of button on the inside of the pin that right. you have to press in with the special tool. You can use a punch. You can you probably can... use a bullet tip. Not that one, though. Um, you actually can't use a bullet tip because you actually have to go all the way through with it. You can use a punch to go through but you're supposed to use their tool. You so. have to go all the way through? Yes, because they it. will actually get caught on the other side of the receiver because it, the ball detent, like you can see me trying no to No joke. Yeah, I don't like it at all. It's a bad design. Just putting it blatantly, if this was my gun, I would take these out and see if I could take the ball detents out of it. I mean, it um, feels like, so why would you put that on there? It oh. increases the cost, what does it do for you? It feels like if if there was any valid use for that, it would be because shooting might back the pins out, which doesn't happen on a regular AR-10. So that's not it. The this only... seems like an anti-theft feature. That's... That's, that's, that is, uh, in a sense, what it it feels like because it's like the f-ing hinges on a bathroom door. Like they don't want someone unscrewing those and stealing the door or... Putting it on your Nintendo Wii so you can't access the proprietary doodads on the inside. Why would you do that other than to make the gun better? That, that uh, was my only. That was the only reason I could think of to actually put those on there. Was like if if this was a range gun, you know what I mean? Like one that you rent out and you just don't want people to mess with inside. You know, people who think they know a lot about ARs and. Or like, oh, the gun could work better if I open it up. That would be cool as someone that worked at a gun store counter for many years. Um, Yeah, people would just snap open the AR. No, sir, please stop. Yeah, but aside from that one use, I can't think of why in the world you would ever do that. Like, I I hate those pens. I absolutely hate those pens. I'm sorry, HK people. I hate them so much. They should be uninvented. Yeah, they, they don't make sense. They don't. And what you're telling me about, not only do you have to push through to to have the detent drop and unlock from this side of the receiver, you have to push it all the way through so that that detent doesn't catch on this side so that you can open it up like a normal AR-10. That's unfathomable to me because these don't walk themselves out when you shoot an AR-10 or an AR-15 for that matter. The detent pins on a standard AR-10 work very well. Yeah, I've never seen enough. one walk out before. But, so no. Yeah. Just no. 
No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah. No, these pins. HK, uninvent these pins, please. No. <laughs> I mean, it's bad enough when you have, like, really tight pins on an AR-15 or AR-10, <laughs> yeah. and you have to use something to push it out anyway. That kind of sucks. But this is unfathomable. Why you would do that? I don't know. I need to clean my gun right now. Oh, wait, I need something to stick all the way through the gun to poke that pin out. Um... Why? While you are going to have to clean your action area on these guns, like every other sort of gun, they're because they're piston driven. You're not going to have to clean it as much as you would your standard AR direct impingement gun. Yes, thank yeah, you. So um, now that being said, I, ca I can't say the Sig looks like it's the easiest to get apart as far as that's concerned. I think this would give the Sig a run for its money. To take this one's gas system out, you're going to have to take off this this rail. It's not the worst thing ever because it's got these big old honking screws here. So at least you don't have to do like 15 different screws. But it's still a thing to keep in mind. So back to what we were saying earlier. As far as all three of these are concerned, even if they're all the same price, this would be the last one we'd recommend. We yeah. don't recommend it. I'm sorry. But if you're looking for more traditional AR-10 stuff, I'd say the SIG. If you're wanting something new and fresh or just like side charging handles... Go with the scar. I'm a big fan of the or scar. Or if you're just a big old FN fanboy, go with the scar. Or yeah. if you're a big old SIG fanboy, go with the SIG. Or if you're a big old HK fanboy, go with don't buy else. the LRP2. <laughs> yeah. Don't do it. Um, and be aware of all the little intricacies about this. Um, I'm sure they're all very fine guns, mechanically speaking, um, as far as accuracy and precision are concerned. Yeah. I would say be ready to try out a few different types of rounds. A lot of different rounds. Not the ones that we used because we weren't impressed at all with the accuracy and precision of this. See, I've always had real good luck with the Precision Hunter with the Hornady stuff. Yeah, well, we know it shoots well out of these two guns. Yeah, I've shot it out of bulk guns. I've shot it out of a few other different sorts of rifles. Um, Jim uses uh, ELTX bullets in his Gen 2, and it works very well. Yeah, out to even a 1,000 yards. So I mean, it's not the factory ammo. He's doing hand loads. Right. But but I mean, we're we're just talking, you know, when even yeah. just talking factory ammo, the precision, the precision hunter, right. which is the ELDX bullets from Hornady, they work really well out of just about everything. So, and they worked well out of this too, better than everything else that shot. <laughs> they worked better than everything else, but still, but two ish MOA. Yeah, um, not I wasn't massively impressed with it. And frankly, um, our shooting conditions, to just our shooting conditions with these two rifles that day that we did this video yeah were vastly better than our shooting conditions with this rifle and we shot both of these essentially the same yeah i mean this was weeble wobbling on top of a uh, a med pack on top of uh, a stack of bullets on top of a weeble wobbly plastic table and no bipod this we had a bipod and a bag and um, a weeble wobbly table. We weren't getting bit by mosquitoes either with these two guns. I mean, this was just so much more of a pleasure to shoot, in my opinion, than this. Yeah. And we shot these on the same day, and this was just easy to get the hits that I was getting. Yeah. I was trying to be accurate. I'm not the best shot. You did better with this very easily. This was easy for me to do way better than this. Yeah. It was less effort, less frustration, and and better results on paper. Bottom line is, because I think we need to go ahead and wrap this up. Yeah. I think we both highly recommend both the SIG DMR and the SCAR. Any three of the SCARs, really. But if you're looking for DMR, you can't go wrong with the SCAR 20, I don't feel like. As far as HK is concerned, we're trying not to sh over it or anything like that. I mean... But don't buy the LRP package. Do just not don't. buy the LRP package. It, it's kind of like... It's a Venus flytrap, dude. It is, it's kind of like I feel like it's the, dishonestly marketed. If you're going to buy this because you just have to have an HK, which, more power to you, we're HK fans. We are. We love the MP5. The venerable MP5 and the G3 series, which, by the way, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Emphasis on subscribe. Hit the bell <laughs> so you can get the notifications. Because we have a set me, 
which is the G3 clone, mm. uh, as well as a C91, which is the closest thing to a G3 that I'll probably get my hands on anytime soon. It's actually, uh, they stopped importing them in like 89 or something right. like that. So it is an actual HK civilian G3, the C91. So we're going to be shooting both of those very soon on Peace, Love, and Guns. Like I said, we're big fans of HK, just not of this gun. And if you're going to buy this gun, don't get the LRP package. Save your money, upgrade it so that, and save the 3000 so you can upgrade it how you want it to. Because you're not going to like the scope if you like the distance. I'm if sorry. you're getting a DMR, you're not going to want that scope. You're not going to. Uh, the, the bipod's fine and the stock is fine, but you save your money and you can get exactly what you're wanting for it um, for the same price. And I think that's all I have to say about it, really. Well, William, thanks for setting up this little uh, this talk. We always like coming out to Gray Fox Ranch. <laughs> I enjoy my time with you guys. It's good stuff. And uh, thank you all for watching. Make sure to comment, like, subscribe, share all of those wonderful things. And uh, we want to thank the generous host that allowed us to borrow both of these guns and shoot them before he ever even set eyes on them. He still hasn't seen this gun. And uh, we've already uh, broken it in as well as this one. And uh, super cool of him to do that. We've talked shit about this one all day long. Basically. <laughs> so thanks for watching. Be good. Stay safe. Keep calm. Carry on. Do all those things. All those wonderful things. And make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Yeah, do that. Do that. Do that. Do it. Go ahead also, and tell us how shitty we are in the uh, comment section down below. Yeah. We like it when people talk dirty to us. But we do have a lot of experience with all this. And anybody who is interested in buying a DMR package, feel free to ask questions. Absolutely. So, as we... Full disclosure, I've never uh, sold myself as an expert on anything. I am an expert on all things. And if you highly disagree, go ahead and hit that thumbs down button. And fuck <laughs> you! Yeah, if you don't like this video, hit the thumbs down. I don't care. You do it. <laughs> you do you. Ain't no one gonna tell you how to live your life. Maybe These are just are. thoughts. And uh, we hope that this has been helpful to you in some way. And uh, if our impressions on these have, Make sure to like the video. Leave us a comment if you have any questions or concerns. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. Tap the bell because we've got other fun stuff coming up. Thanks for watching and stay safe. We love you guys.